I'm Wendy, your Divine Feminine Holistic Wellness Coach. I empower exhausted moms in navigating through postpartum depression and mom guilt uh, to embrace their Divine Feminine and awaken their inner goddess. And uh, I will be on, I've, I've been interviewed on the parody show uh, and uh, get ready for an empowering hour as we discuss uh, about postpartum and my journey and, and how I'm here to help. Uh, other moms. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. I'm your host, Prosper Tarulinga, and today we have a truly inspiring guest who embodies resilience and transformation. Now, joining us all the way from Cairo in Egypt, but she just told me they've moved. She's going to be telling us where they have moved to is Wendy Yaya. Now, Wendy, how are you doing today? I'm doing amazing, Prosper, and thank you so much for having me uh, as a guest on your show. I'm very excited uh, to be uh, speaking with you and having a discussion with you and, and your audience and my everybody's audience. <laughs> so I'm pretty excited. Absolutely. Well, the pleasure is all mine, Wendy. I mean, obviously, where you are, you're literally in my homeland while I'm all the way over here. So I'm a little bit jealous of um, <laughs> you know what you guys are doing there. You said you just moved from Cairo. Where did you move to? Uh, we moved to, uh, well, we stayed in Cairo for two years. And then uh, last summer, we uh, we decided to move near the Red Sea because that was always my my dream to to stay near the the sea so the red sea is right here and it's so we we, we made that step and and moved closer absolutely. <laughs> absolutely i've heard that you can actually float in the red sea and just because of the salt content of the water is that true yes it's very concentrated in salt and it it's, makes it very easy to to float up i, I actually i tested it out uh, a couple of days ago we went to to the beach and uh, it's true. <laughs> you can Abs float. <laughs> absolutely. Well, that's that's an exciting thing. I'd be there all day. I don't think I don't know how you get any work done, Wendy. Yeah, it's uh we, well we the compound that we live in, we have uh, we're not like the beach is not our at our at our back door. So we have to drive a little bit to get there, but uh yeah, and we we have a pool. And so so yeah, I kind of like multitask it, you know. I work when I whenever I feel like working, and then you know, when I need to, to that that's the, the greatest thing about being your own boss and having your own uh, your own business, right? So you can uh, set your own hours and and still enjoy life. <laughs> absolutely. Well, now I'm getting um, you know, location envy. Because, I mean, obviously, if you can just drive and go to the beach and um, still be able to run a business that's profitable and enjoyable, that is the epitome of freedom right there. But for those that are meeting Wendy for the very first time, you are going to discover that Wendy is a heart-centered coach that is dedicated to helping women overcome challenges and wear their goddess crowns with confidence. As a mother of four and a survivor of postpartum depression, Wendy's mission is personal and it is very powerful. So many people, like she was telling me uh, earlier on, just go either undiagnosed or with no tools to actually help them be, do, and have a happier existence but now you might be wondering how did wendy end up in cairo well she's going to be telling us all about that in the next minutes that are coming through now wendy i could go on and on and talk about you know your escapades and everything else that comes along with it you could just take me out of my own misery and tell us a little bit about um, your journey so far and how you actually got started as a um, coach, uh, well, my my journey is a, is a pretty long one, and my postpartum journey actually, um, it's I I had always struggled with depression and having self confidence issues and self doubt and things like that like, all my life. I always felt like I didn't belong in society. I'm an outside of the box thinker, so. 
yeah, but I, I felt like kind of like a black sheep in society because I didn't feel like I didn't really fit in. Um, but uh, what took me on the postpartum journey is uh, when I gave birth to my my firstborn daughter 24 years ago in 1999. Um, it was a it was a traumatic birthing experience. So that triggered severe postpartum depression in me. And this lasted, uh, well, I can say almost 20 years, <laughs> over 20 years, really, because uh, postpartum depression, what it is, it's, it's not just like the baby blues where, you know, because it's normal when moms have, you know, give birth, there's a lot of changes happening in the body. There's uh, hormones and there's also, you know, you're tired, you know, all of a sudden you have this little baby to take care of. Uh, so the baby blues can last maybe, I don't know, two, three weeks or something like that. But postpartum depression is actually, it's, it doesn't just go away on its own. So if it's not dealt with, you're, you're always, uh, you're always, you always have a self-doubt and a lot of moms going through postpartum depression, uh, they go, they have a lot of mom guilt and, and that stems from limiting beliefs and it can stem from traumatic, you know, ch childhood traumas and, and things like that. So, so yeah. And what most moms don't know is that it, there's tools out there, but like when I was going through it 24 years ago, there, like it, it wasn't really something I, a lot of moms were going through it, but at the time I thought I was the only one. I thought I was alone. So it's, it's, it can be like a very lonely journey because you know, and, and like as moms and as women, we've been conditioned to have a smile on our faces, you know, like the commercials, <laughs> you know, you're, you're a mom, you, you, you have to do this, but you still have to be happy. You still have to, you know, and I mean, motherhood is a, is a gift. It's the greatest gift that God gave us. But what they don't tell us is that it's the hardest job and they, they don't, they don't tell us like the, uh, you know, the, not the bad parts, but, you know, the other stuff <laughs> that comes along with, with motherhood. So it, it's, uh, yeah, when I was going through it, it was really, I thought I was the only one and I felt guilty because I mean, you know, I loved my children and I loved, I loved them so much, but then I had all these heavy emotions inside me, you know, I had bitter, like I, I didn't have my freedom anymore as a woman. I didn't have like, there's a lot of factors uh, that come into play with, with that. So it took me, yeah, 24 years to figure it out. <laughs> uh, I had to do a lot of work on myself. So, you, you know, you, once you have tools and you can learn those tools and you can apply them and it makes it less uh, uh, impactful. Like, yeah. Well, th thank you so much for sharing that because I know this is not an easy thing, but you went on and did it four times. Yes, I did it four times. <laughs> so, uh, well, my first two, it, it, it wasn't like I went through even up to the point where I like I was so depressed that I, I couldn't even... Uh, function anymore so yeah so they had to go li live with their dad <laughs> for uh because my two oldest are, are from a, a previous marriage so they they had to go live with their dad so again their mom guilt I would like I felt like a total failure when this happened because I was I didn't admit I didn't want to admit that I had a problem I didn't want to because I felt too proud and I felt like people would judge me so yeah, I, I, I got to a point and I know a lot of other moms probably are going through this too. And they feel like they're alone and everything. So, and um, when I met my current husband and I, cause I already knew that I could suffer with this. So I, I just, I dealt with it <laughs> and, and it wasn't so as bad. Like the first time you're a mom, it's a scary thing. Cause like you, I mean, a baby doesn't come uh, with uh, instructions. So, but as I, as I had more babies, then like I already knew what I needed to, to do. So my confidence was there more than, than the first time around. So, so it, uh, like 
through all the births and they were all uh, hard births too. <laughs> uh, my, my second born, she, I had her natural, but uh, my three others, they were all C-sections. Um, yeah. And they were, my third one was traumatic also, but again, I had gone through it already. So I, it wasn't as hard. Uh, but uh, the mom guilt was still there, the, like all that stuff, but it wasn't as uh, as powerful as the first time around, I think. Absolutely. Yeah, it's, it was still there. Absolutely. And thank you so much for going there with us. Now, Wendy, you described yourself as a black sheep. Um, so there is a level of awareness that you would have started to realize even at that sort of young um, of an age, what sort of examples would have made you label yourself um, in that sort of uh, light? Yeah, I, I, I've always thought differently. I, I see the world in a different way. Um, you know, while most people, they will just follow along and, you know, comply and all that. Like, I just felt that this modern world just wasn't I don't know. I felt I didn't belong in, in this uh, controlled society because I've always been an outside of the box thinker. You know, I, I, I read between the lines. I, I see things that others may not see. So um, I assume that's probably why I, I saw myself as a black sheep. Because even in my family, like I was, I was always thinking differently than them. And I was always, but I mean, now that we're in this time right now, I understand why, uh, like why I was considered that. And I'm just basically joining the the other herd of the black sheeps <laughs> of the world <laughs> right now. So great yeah. stuff. I mean, obviously the whole out, out of the box thinking, you know, emanates in just the nature of who you are today. I mean, the way you met your husband was not conventional at that particular time yeah that we will be we met online when the internet was uh, still not really understood <laughs> in 2005 so yeah so technology is great in that sense because i, I was able to meet my uh, my soulmate and my current husband so and i and i was able to become a mom two more times after this so it's a it's a blessing Absolutely. Talk about foresight and faith into the future, right? I mean, obviously, if you, no one was doing it around then and you went ahead and um, did it and now you've got a happily ever after story. Yeah, well, we've, we've had challenges over time and stuff like that. I mean, a long distance relationship is not the easiest, but uh, like I do know that when when I first decided to come uh, three years later, I met him online and stuff like that. Like I decided, okay, I need to come in and actually, you know, see him in person. And uh, all my family and friends, like they they were all like really like scared about about everything. So uh, yeah, I had never gone anywhere in my life basically, and I had never been on a plane. And then I just said, oh no, I'm I'm doing it. I'm going. <laughs> I felt called to do it, so I booked my ticket and and off I I went by myself. I didn't have anybody with me, and I and I came. And he was there at the airport <laughs> wow. in two thousand eight. Yeah. Wow! And obviously, this is the first time you're meeting him in person. I mean, your journey from Rogersville to New Brunswick as. Which is a small, very small village. It's not like a, it's not like a city or anything like that. There, there's you, you, everybody knows each other. <laughs> very small town. So uh, yeah, it was. Uh, but they, I had the confidence that he would be there and that he would be waiting for me. So I, I knew already, and I just followed that. So I guess I've I've always I've always kind of like made decisions that are not uh, like your norm <laughs> or the norm or what other people would do. So yeah, always yeah. been a kind of like a little bit of a rebel in that sense, I guess. Absolutely. Were you also prepared for the culture of shock that you would have experienced as soon as you hit the shores of Africa? 
No, actually. I mean, you know, being raised in Canada and all that, and like, and Cairo is a huge city uh, compared to the village that I'm from. So, uh, yeah, it was a little bit overwhelming, like seeing all these people and all these cars and all the honking. And like, I mean, it's a totally different way of living too, eh? Yeah. In Canada, it's more controlled, of course, like there's laws and seatbelts off bad then, like, you know, there wasn't a, now it's starting to get a little bit more, like they're putting more laws, like for seatbelt, for example, and things like that. But when I first came in 2008, it was, I was like blown away. But the, but like, for example, uh, I remember one time we were driving on the highway and we saw this uh, family, a full family on a motorcycle. So like the dad was driving, there was, I think, two smaller kids in the middle. The mom was sitting like on the side and she was carrying a baby and she was like, holding. and I was like, oh my God, <laughs> you don't do, you don't see that in Canada, but uh, it's, uh, that's just the way of life. And like, okay, no, they, they don't have a seat belt and no, they don't have a helmet or things like that, but they still have their faith that, you know, God will protect them and always all will be fine so it, it was a little bit yeah overwhelming at times especially seeing all these people around me because I wasn't used to that in Canada there's so much space and there's not a lot of people so yeah but uh I I got used to it I came here quite a few times after this and then you know and then then we we lived here for two years at when we first got here in 2021 so I I really got to experience you know the, the Cairo life and the, the hustle and bustle and all that but it it's 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 amazing. It's beautiful. I've heard that um, uh, during rush hour, you literally cannot cross the road because everyone is just interweaving um, buses, cars, scooters. Everyone is just going somewhere. Yeah. And all of a sudden, everybody seems to find their way, and everybody's going. Yeah, they, they still weasel through. I re I remember one time we we were crossing this really busy highway we were going to go take a bus and uh my husband was was like he, like he was protecting me of course and I was holding his hand but I felt like you know the the game Frogger I'm not <laughs> sure if you've heard of that game you know where you have to kind of like jump from one place to the other so you don't get hit but that's what it felt like uh but like he was guiding me so I, I knew I, I was safe but like seeing all these cars coming at me I was like oh my god like okay I can't freeze I have to keep going I have to keep going <laughs> but uh yeah it's a it's a totally different uh, different way of life it's uh yeah you have to come and see it to like to really know <laughs> what it's like absolutely and I like how you said you can't freeze and you gotta keep going so you had your dark moments, um, you know, and obviously you were out there and I'm supposing it was just yourself, even though you were amongst, um, you know, people and maybe some sort of loved ones, but they probably wouldn't have understood what you were going through. What is it that then kept you going and sort of motivated to keep fighting for yourself and your daughters? Uh, it's, uh, yeah, like it, it's a misunderstood concept. Uh, and uh, it's not something that I was proud of, you know, having all these feelings and all this mom guilt. And, and you know, I, I really felt like I wasn't a good mom and that I didn't deserve my kids and that I didn't. And, and like any mom going through postpartum depression are going to have these uh, these feelings. And then this brings more mom guilt because, I mean, you know, you're supposed to be nurturing. You're supposed to be smiling all the time. You're supposed to be, you know, being always there for your kids. But like it's. It's not just being tired physically. It's it's yeah, all of the lit limiting beliefs and all the self doubt and the like, all that guilt comes, uh, and it comes in waves. Like I wasn't always you know in a bad spot because I got pretty used to putting a smile on my face and pretending everything was okay when when it was not. Uh, so a lot of and and a lot of moms are going through that. I'm sure. So what what yeah. what was the turning point then when you actually started to then overcome these struggles and start transforming your life? Um, because you would have noticed that wait a minute, this 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 ain't right. Be honest, completely honest. Uh, only maybe two three years ago, 
when I when I well I, when I left my my like my job, I, I was working for the government. Uh, for the Canadian government, and I left my job, and then I started to follow my passions, and, and do, and then I took a, a passionate marketing course, and this really helped me because they taught us about that, you know, self love. They taught us about uh, following your passions, releasing your limiting beliefs, and all that stuff. So when I started to do that, I was actually able to forgive myself for being in that position and also to, to heal, but you're not really like, we're always, it's always a process, right? Like you, you can't say you're 100% healed. There's always challenges that come your way, but um, now I, I've learned tools to be able to cope and putting it all behind me. So, and, uh, and I promised myself that I wouldn't get myself to that point from like, from up because I have two other daughters that I you know that depend on me and stuff like that so uh it's uh but even for my my third one because uh, I have two with my my current husband um I was alone giving birth to her because my husband was uh, still in Egypt <laughs> so yeah I I got pregnant when I was on a trip to visit him and stuff like that but I didn't want to stay here so I went back home. I wanted them to have the Canadian, uh, the Canadian uh, birth certificate. Uh, so I was by myself. So and I'm, I'm thinking, OK, I'm probably going to go through this again. But it wasn't as bad because I knew already. So I was able to kind of like, you know, push it back and deal with it. So I just dealt with it. And, you know, everything was was OK. But I was I still had the struggles. I still had the, you know, the, the feelings. But I. I learned to kind of, you know, not let it take over. Mm. Now you raised a point that made me feel, oh, a little bit um, surprised that your job was to work in the Canadian um, government. That would have been like a chameleon in a bag of Skittles. Um, you know, no yeah. way the kind of person that you are and how did you cope with that I mean th that's not a place for a black sheep no <laughs> and I felt like a black sheep there too uh, it's, it's uh, you know it's um and this was a, a cushy job like everybody a lot of people want would have wanted to have this job and I was really happy to get it uh I mean you know, it helped it, it helped me you know financially and and that and stuff like that but just being in a, in an office, uh, if between four walls and having to follow, you know, you have to follow protocol. You have to follow. Uh, it just wasn't for me. I, I knew deep down that I was meant for something more than that than just processing firearms licenses because that's where I used to work. I used to work for the Canadian Firearms Program. Uh, so yeah, and, and I knew and and. And these types of jobs, I mean, unless you're a brown noser, <laughs> that's what we call them, brown nose. <laughs> unless you're, you know, friends, best friends with the higher management, well, you won't get anywhere. So I, I and I'm not like that. So I knew that I would never, I would never go. Up. I would always stay at that level. And yeah, and when I, when I gave birth to uh, my fourth daughter in, uh, in 2016, I went on a maternity leave. And that made it so hard to go back. Mm -hmm. I just, I didn't feel it anymore. Um, and uh, my husband was, we're, we, we had a restaurant. We, yeah, we had a restaurant and uh, he was really busy and all that. Uh, and then he let that go. And that's in 2019. So I went on a sick leave and I just, I said, okay, I don't know where the world is getting, where we're going to be or what's going to happen. But all I know is I, I can't go back. I just can't go back. I didn't have a plan B. Uh, he was laid off like from, from his, his other job. And I'm thinking, okay, well, you've been here since 2014 and we never really spent time together because <laughs> we've been working as slaves in the system ever since he got, mm. he got to Canada in 2014. So I said, okay, I'm going on a sick leave. So I did that. And uh, then just a door just opened for me. My sister 
uh, she's a Reiki healer and she was looking for a massage table, like a, a ta table so that she, and then she said, Wendy, I just had this light bulb moment. Mas How about, I don't know, I'm thinking of going to massage therapy and I'm saying, oh my God, yes, <laughs> let's do it. So we, uh, yeah, we, we signed up for a massage course. Uh, my husband joined in because we were already home. And uh, we were all on a program and that. So, yeah, so that door opened. Uh, but when I gave my resignation for my job, I felt like a, when I when I actually gave the resignation to my team leader and walked out the door, I felt like a huge load came off my shoulders. And I started to skip down the street like a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what would happen. I didn't know. I didn't have a plan B, but I just I just. Put, you know, put faith that I'd be protected and something would come up. Absolutely. Which it did. Now, you mentioned uh, massage and Reiki there, which are maybe some methods and tools that some people utilize. I mean, you've obviously faced and now overcome a lot of uh, challenges. What sort of methods or tools have been the most effective for you in your healing process? Uh, being myself stopping to please others because I used to be a people pleaser mm. I still am but at least now I can choose who I please and who I don't <laughs> that's the, the that's a difference um yeah just living each day one day at a time instead of worrying about you know the past fretting over the past or worrying about the future that's one thing that a lot of people forget like we have a life right now this is where we are right now in the present moment so I started to do that. Um, I released my limiting beliefs. Uh, start yeah, the, the self practicing self love that that really really helped uh, a lot. Uh, once you start to love yourself as you are, then it, everything just just comes. <laughs> so um, I like meditation. I do meditation also. Uh, I also like to practice uh, Tai Chi and Qigong. So that's part of my uh, my routine. I don't practice as every day as I would love to, but uh, it, when I do, it I feel like more grounded. Um, and one thing also is spending time in nature, like connecting with nature. That that really helps. Uh, when you're stuck in the rat race, you you don't think about these things because I mean you're thinking, okay, I have to get up. At this time, I have to get the kids ready for school. I have to go to work, drop them to school, and then you work your day. But so, but when you're outside of that, I got myself out of the, that rat race. So it gave me more time. Right? Like I was able to actually uh, do this stuff. And I also studied like spirituality and and things like that. So alternative uh, methods to uh, to help me uh, help keep myself on track <laughs> and uh, and doing good. Absolutely. Would you not have um, benefited from just going to see a doctor? Uh, well, I did go see a doctor uh, a few times, actually. And uh, he put me on, like when I was really going through it, like the first time around, uh, he put me on uh, antidepressants. So and at the time, and this was new even like for antidepressants, prescriptions, uh, that, that was 24 years ago. Now they give a pill for everything, you know? So I hesitated and I thought, okay, well, I mean, I can try it. Uh, and the dosage wasn't that much. It wasn't a big dosage or anything, but um, I got off of them not too long after because the feelings were still coming. I still had the mom guilt, but I felt also like there was a wall. Like I was... I don't know how to explain it. Like, it, like the, yeah, they still came at me, but I felt numb. It, it didn't make me feel better. So I, I just got off of them. <laughs> and, uh, and then I just, yeah, I just kept going every day, every day, you know, doing what I need to do. And I took care of my, my, my girls. And, but uh, yeah, I just got off of them. I've, I've never been one to take uh, pills unless I have to. I'm not uh, it's uh, there's other ways that you can heal yourself or make your, yourself feel better. And then when I took my massage course there, we had to learn all about pharmaceuticals and we had to learn about, you know, what they do, the effects on the body and all that. So, 
So yeah, so I now I no, like there's if I have an ailment somewhere, unless I have a broken bone or that I, you know, I need an operation. I mean, you know, holistic, <laughs> you can, you know, if you need an operation, for example, well then yes, go go see the doctor, but there's a there's always a way to heal yourself holistically without having to take all those pills because you take a pill from one, for one thing and it's just basically a band-aid. It doesn't take it away. And even when it comes to like mental issues, like depression and stuff like that, uh, unless you have an imbalance where you do need these pills to balance it out, it's not, you, you just end up numb. Like you're still having, they're putting a band-aid and, but they're not giving you tools to actually really release it. Because I mean, if you want to heal, you have to be uh, courageous enough to look inside yourself. Healing comes from inside. Nothing you do outside, unless you work on yourself in the inside, nothing you do will make a difference. It'll, it'll always come back. So that's something that I've learned also in the past couple of years. No, absolutely. It's, now you've turned these personal struggles into a mission to now help other women, which I think is a noble cause because somebody else would have been like oh i've been through my go through so let me just look after me and heal but now you're sending the elevator down and helping other women that might be going through um you know the same sort of postpartum now how do you help these women that are struggling with uh, postpartum depression and the mom guilt that um you were going through in especially in your coaching well, I've I've recently uh, when I first started my coaching business, I was focusing mostly like on on, on women like in general, okay, w which is all part of what I'm doing right now. But very recently, I decided to narrow down my niche to uh, to focus on moms with postpartum depression since I've been through it, right? And uh, I had joined some groups uh, with a lot of there was like fifty thousand members in 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 two groups that I'm in uh, and I could hear the cry for help. There was no help. Like there was a chat room and like all they, like they didn't know what to do with themselves anymore. Like they were like at the, some even were suicidal. So that made me think, okay, well, okay, I'm a coach. Now I need to maybe focus on, on these women and these moms, because if, if a mom can heal and be happy, the kids will be happy and it, it, it helps the family dynamics. I mean, uh, and when I, um, when I talk about this, like um, I started to do lives on TikTok. I'm, I'm growing my TikTok right now. Uh, but there's a lot of men that come to my lives. But, and when I'm talking about it, they, they'll ask questions. And, and, and I tell them like, this is what I'm doing right now. I'm, I'm talking about postpartum depression. It's mostly for moms. But I mean, if you're a dad and you have a wife that's going through this, well, you need to be educated too because it affects the, the dads too. It affects the men too. Uh, I mean, you know, a lot of men, I'm sure, seeing their their, their wives going through this, they, they probably have no clue what to do <laughs> or how to support so uh, so what I do is uh, I, I schedule a one-on-one, -on -one, uh, complimentary, uh, I call them goddess coffee chats. <laughs> I don't like to call them discovery calls or, or anything like that. So yeah, they can come and have a, a chat with me. And then, you know, depending on where they're, they're at on their journey and what they need, then we can come up with like a coaching plan, like a personal, because each journey is different, right? Like I don't, I don't tailor... Uh, just like one, put everything in one pot. It's, uh, it, everybody's different. So depending on where they are on their journey, and then uh, I offer them like tools, like de de depending, like uh, there's EFT tapping that I've learned that helps uh, with anxiety, for example, and it can help with a lot of other things. Um, and uh, one thing that a lot of moms going through postpartum depression is uh, they lack self-love. They think it's selfish. Right. Because we, we've been taught as a society that loving ourselves is selfish. Uh, and a lot when you have, especially when you have babies or like small kids, it's hard to for a mom to take 
take care of herself and her needs. Every, every, everyone's needs goes before hers. So I try to get them to, you know, understand that it's important. If you don't fill your cup, how are you going to fill your kid's cup? You know, your cup's going to get empty. And, and then what are your kids are going to get? You know, so it, I teach them about that. And, and, and as I said, it's, it's different. Everybody is different and unique. So uh, mm. it, it all depends on, on where they are. Now, Wendy, I, I'm supposing these these mothers have not been flying for a very long time because you know what they say when you're on a flight. You know, you want to put your mask on first before you can be able to help other people. And if you are depleted, then you're not going to be um, helping those that are around you. But obviously, that message only um, you know is not reinforced in real life. And you also mentioned that. You know, you were going into groups where there's like 50,000 of these women. So that must mean there's a lot of people that are going through this. What are some sort of misconceptions about postpartum depression that you wish more people would understand? Because the reason why there's so many people congregating is because there's, I don't think, enough information going by. And maybe some people don't quite know what it is and what it's not. So maybe you can help us with those um, misconceptions there. Yeah, there are a lot of misconceptions about like what a mom's job is, what what a, what we're supposed to be doing as moms. Uh, as I mes mentioned previously, society doesn't teach us that there's a dark side to motherhood. You know, it's uh, it's all uh, and we it seemed like uh, there's this uh, this stereotype that okay. Uh, when you're a young girl, this Prince Charming is going to come sweep you off your feet and, you know, white picket fences and everything's going to be uh, great. But, um, yeah, like I think even through time, like if you go through history, I'm sure moms were going through this stuff because, I mean, it's, it's not new, but they just dealt with it. They just felt, OK, this is normal. This is supposed to be like this. And I'm just going to put a smile on my face and I'm just going to keep going. Uh, but, and I'm sure they were tired. I mean, my grandmother, she had 18 kids. I can imagine that she would have been, she must have felt like that, but you know, Sorry. it was just, you just, what? you just kind of put it under the rug. One eight, you say? One eight. Yeah. I think she owes us a book. How did she manage? First of all, God knows. <laughs> yeah, God knows. I've I've always wondered my that question. And uh, this is my mom's mother, and my dad's mom had sixteen. So uh, I think back then they were trying to maybe populate the, the the you know the area. So and there was also religion that was coming into play. Yeah, the the, the priest would knock on the door. You know, you're you're preventing the family from coming. So yep, go 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 go. Or or the winters were very cold and very long. <laughs> So that could be another another reason there were so many babies, but the baby boom, the baby boomers. That's what they they call them, big families. So uh yeah. I never saw them depressed and I never saw them, but I'm sure they probably had those feelings as well. Mm. Now you keep referring to self-care um and you know things that maybe uh, moms should do in order for them to be there for their young ones. Now, maybe let's look at your specific case. How do you balance this self-care with obviously the demands of being a coach, uh, demands of being a mom, and at some point you were homeschooling your children as well? I am homeschooling my children. Yeah, I'm a, I'm, I call myself a Jill of all trades and master them all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, not sure if you've heard the term jack of all trees, but yeah, I'm a Jill of all trees and I, I've learned to master them all. Um, yeah, it, it does get overwhelming, but I have a very supportive husband as well. So and uh, my my two daughters uh, that are with me here, uh, one is 14 and the other is seven. So they're a little bit older now, so they can, you know, so if, if I have a coaching call, for example, like our interview right now, well, they know, OK, don't come inside the room while mom's having her interview and and things like that. So they're they're a little more self uh, sufficient uh, than they were. Um, if they would be younger, then of course it would probably be a different story. Um, I know it 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 hasn't been e it wasn't easy when 
they were smaller. Uh, so I think it's asking help, ask help when you need it. Because a lot of the time, the mom guilt stops us from saying, hey, I need help. Can you please help me? Or, you know, telling our partner or husband or, or whatnot. So, so yeah, just be vocal about it. If you need help, ask for help because how are they supposed to know? So uh, that's, that's part of self-care. Um, if you have small kids, like, like a baby and a toddler and all that, I used to, <clears throat> when I just needed a, uh, like just a breather, just to, you know, get back. I used to just lock myself in the bathroom. And just take a breather and, and say, okay, whatever, whatever happens, happens. I need this breather. I just need it. So uh, instead of keep going and then get overwhelmed and then, you know, things just start to pile up. So, yeah, so you have to, you have to take care of yourself. You have to, and when I mean take care of yourself, like, yes, a bath is nice and, you know, all that stuff, but really like focusing on you, like what you, what you love. What, what you're passionate about. who are you inside when you're not a mom basically so it's uh that that's something that uh, a lot of moms don't do wow because there's there's a big distinction because it was just you and maybe your partner now there's three of you or four of you and you have to divide all of that love attention and everything else that comes along with it with your time space and just about everything that comes along with it now I mean, obviously your story is a very powerful example of resilience. I mean, well, we couldn't expect any less from a black sheep. I mean, who does <laughs> <laughs> yeah. what you have done, you know? Um, how can our viewers maybe apply the lessons from your journey into their own lives? Because some people might just be like, oh, I can't be like that, or I'm not going to be taking a flight halfway across the galaxy to Africa and whatever it is that you have done. Some people might just be thinking, oh, maybe there's somehow something that I can do for myself without having to leave the continent. I would say to them, uh, it, but I mean, this is my journey. This is how my journey ended up and everybody's living their own journey. So they don't have to leave their countries or anything like that if they don't want to. Uh, me, that that was just part of, of my journey. Uh, but uh, one thing is don't be afraid to take a leap of faith. You know, uh, when when push comes to shove, uh, when we, when we did leave Canada, in 2021 due to the mandates and all that i mean we weren't planning to live in egypt right now we and same goes for when i left my government job i mean you know people thought i was crazy for leaving this pushy job um you just have to yeah follow your gut your intuition and whatever it tells you you know it's a, if something doesn't feel right anymore for you and doesn't serve you it's okay to step away from it it's okay to take a leap of faith. And sometimes you just have to. Like, I didn't know what the outcome was going to be when I was going to come here. Um, we were lucky that we did have his family that lives here. So we were able to, you know, stay with his family in the family house and all that. So when we go through challenges, yeah, so it's, you just have to, yeah, take action. <laughs> take leap of faith and trust the process. You have to trust Learn to trust the process. And that's where a lot of people get stuck because we're either stuck in the past or we're worried about the what if. The what if, but like the past is not defining your now. Like mm -hmm. you're not there anymore. These things happen to you. Uh, so, some things may have been traumatic. Some of them you may, you may have blocked it, uh, but you're not there anymore. So releasing these limiting beliefs surrounding, um, and I think healing trauma, like a lot of most, I think most of society is traumatized. We live in a traumatized world, depending, and it, it, it's from different backgrounds. Like you don't have to be rich or poor or whatever. It's, it's just the way the world is. Uh, so, and uh, that's something that I've learned. Um, I, I learned that my, postpartum depression was actually triggered from 
past childhood trauma and sexual abuse. That's where my uh, people pleasing came from. That's where my limiting beliefs, not having confidence in myself, the self doubt and all that, that I felt. Uh, so, and the whole, of course, I mean, becoming a mom, becoming a mom was a really, uh, a really big thing because it, it was scary. Uh, and a lot of moms would feel scared. But, you know, they're not going to admit it. You know what I mean? Because, I, oh, you're pregnant, you have this bit. So we, because we have this kind of like stigma uh, on what is becoming a mom. So, yeah, so you just have to, yeah, just love yourself. Learn to love yourself. Practice self-care uh, and learn to live in the present moment and have faith that everything is going to work out. Because that's all we have control of. We just have control about the present, <laughs> what's happening right now. So, Absolutely. And before we wrap up, where can our viewers find you and learn a little bit more about your workshops and uh, coaching services? Uh, you, I'm, I'm pretty much everywhere. Uh, I don't have a website yet. I'm working on getting that. Uh, but uh, you can find me on Facebook. Uh, my name, Wendy Yahya. <laughs> Um, you can find me on TikTok if you're if you prefer TikTok, and it's Unleash Your Inner Goddess Coaching. Uh, and on Instagram, it says the same. Um, and uh, I think I shared with you. Did I share it with you my link tree? Yes, I think I did. Yeah. So anyway, so yeah, I don't have a I don't have a website, but uh, uh, Prosper will be sharing uh, my link tree link, and uh, you can. Uh, you can find me that way. Absolutely. I'll definitely put that link in there. And that's where I got to learn a little bit more about yourself and was quite intrigued um, about what you've done and who you've been. Now, obviously, you've been a pioneer in your own right. You've been a black sheep here and there. And now you're just floating in the Red Sea. What's next? What can people expect with Wendy now? Well, um, uh, by by changing my niche, like like focusing, uh, I'm hoping to help more uh, more women because I mean, first of all, they're the, the the most of these women that I that I've been helping for the past two years are moms also. So and some have traumas and some have you know may have uh, gone through postpartum depression. So yeah, my focus, big focus, is going to be uh, growing and uh, helping more. Uh, moms and women uh, to unleash their inner goddesses uh, once you're healed from postpartum depression then you feel like you're going to be a goddess <laughs> right because a, a mom going through postpartum depression doesn't necessarily feel like she's a goddess right now but so uh, uh, I um, I'm having a three a free three-day workshop coming up um the date has not been set yet, but uh, I, uh, it's going to be in June. And uh, there's going to be uh, tools and it's going to be an, an amazing and empowering. Uh, it's going to be uh, a private event, of course. And uh, there's going to be a, a Facebook group as well uh, that postpartum moms can join um, can join uh, for support and all that. And I also have another group. Uh, that I started uh, about two years ago called Unleash Your Inner Goddess. Uh, and there uh, I have a, a very wide, uh, like from different backgrounds, like women from different backgrounds that are just like joining me in sisterhood. So uh, I talk about spirituality. I talk about uh, all sorts of stuff, like, you know, empower, to, to empower uh, sisters to uh, step into their, their divine feminine uh, so that's that's also a, a group that it's kind of really related to what I'm doing now. Like they're kind of, you know, in the same in the same boat. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Wendy. I mean, for sharing your incredible journey with us today. I mean, just your resilience and dedication are truly inspiring. And the fact that you are now helping others to also unleash their inner goddess it's something that is quite remarkable. So I really appreciate your time today. Well, thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Honored to be a guest on your show. And uh, it's great. It's great. It's been wonderful. Great talking to you and discussing with you. And 
awesome. I feel I'm excited. <laughs> Absolutely, Wendy. Well, it takes two to tango, you know. So, yeah, I I really appreciate just just your life story and your experience. I have so much value for those that are going through uh, postpartum, and I think obviously you're shining the torch and letting them know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. Because if somebody's going through what they're going through by themselves. They might just think that, like you said, some people are suicidal. People might actually think, you know, there's no, um, you know, recourse out of this. So I really appreciate what you are doing. And I actually think you're doing God's work here. That's my mission. That's what I like. I've, I've been wondering all my life pretty much like what my mission on you heard. I'm, I'm, I finally figured it out. <laughs> so my goal is, you know, I'm on a mission to help other women and to help the collective because I mean we're moving to a, a there's a big shift happening right now on, on earth so and uh, I know that I'm here to help guide you know others to and especially moms and and women uh, to you know to move forward and to push through the new earth the new way the new earth uh, or, or whatever that you, you want to call it so I'm just very happy to be here in this moment in time. This is what my my calling is. <laughs> Absolutely. And I'm really excited for the, you know, task at hand, because like you said, so many things are unraveling. So many things are coming to the surface and there's going to need, you know, people like yourself that have been through the stuff to then spearhead and show others the path because so many people are going to be needing it and so yeah just don't forget us mere mortals when you get all um um rich and famous because there's going to be a lot of work and um uh, things coming your way i can see that yeah, oh i uh, mean no matter what no it's not about the money for me like of course i need to survive and i need you know it's i want to live you know a life of freedom and stuff like that but First and foremost is I I want to help. That's yes. that's the first uh, my my goal and my mission. And then the rest will come. The abundance will come with with with, with everything else. I mean Absolutely. we we have the power to Absolutely. be abundant Absolutely. and to freedom. Absolutely, and I bet on your statue they will have the words "Here lies a humble woman" because you're doing great amounts of work and um obviously those that will notice will take notice now to our viewers if you found wendy's story as motivating as i did please make sure you re-watch this episode or share it with anyone who might actually need a beast of inspiration because some people might be going through their go-throughs like what wendy has just elaborated um, she was in a group where there's 50,000 women. That's a lot of tears, um, you know, that are just happening unwatched and without the tools or the systems that can actually help them be, do and have a happier existence. And there's people like Wendy that are out here hellbent to make sure that um, all the other women would never go through what she went through and while you edit don't forget to subscribe to the online prosperity show for more insp inspirational and insightful content like this until next time stay empowered and keep prospering bye for now